Hello and welcome, beloved viewers. I am Apostle John Grace Festus. The book Joshua 1 verses 7 to 8 speak of a leader obedience to God was more necessary than any other quality, Deuteronomy 8 verses 1. This is still true. The book of the law was the revelation God gave through Moses at M.T. Sinai Deuteronomy 4 verses 5 to 8. Moses had written down all God gave him to write, Exodus 17 verses 14. God's people had to give it the highest importance in their lives, Deuteronomy 6 verses 6 to 7. That was the only way to victory and the enjoyment of God's blessings. Now we have God's full revelation in the Bible, and God's word is of the utmost importance in the life of every believer. Obedience to it is the only way to have success in the Christian. And today I have the incredible privilege of introducing a man of profound wisdom and spiritual insight, a vessel chosen by the Almighty Himself to enlighten us on this topic. Get ready to be immersed in the divine revelations as we embark on this enlightening journey with none other than Apostle Joshua Selman. Stay tuned as we delve into the depth of spiritual truth and transformation together. Blind Bartimaeus cried, Thou son of David, he provoked the anointing. That is the anointing people like Kenneth E. Hagen would call the anointing upon. It doesn't come all the time. Anybody that tells you it comes all the time is a liar and doesn't understand anything about the anointing. If it's operational in you all the time, it will kill you. You do not have the physical capacity. Your body does not have that stamina. Have you finished preaching and you went back and felt tired? It lifted. That's what Jesus meant by virtue has gone out of me. When virtue leaves you, prophets in ancient times, when the anointing landed upon them for their experience, when it lifted, some of them were sick for days. They had to eat herbs to recover from the strain. Are we together? This anointing is activated at the point of delivery at the point where you have to do that which you were born to do so you can be sleeping in your house the moment there is a demand and it is with respect to your assignment the anointing is like a lion within you are we together that's the reason why you can see a man of god you may not even be able to touch him when he's on stage after the meeting you are hugging him slapping him because something has lifted but if by any mistake you're hugging you apply faith to it it will return that's what makes people just they are laughing and the next in the power of god because their hunger did not die with the service are we together so many people were touching jesus and a woman came he said if i may but touch the hem of his garment jesus was not even aware but it was automatic the moment there was a demand that anointing that messianic anointing that will fulfill isaiah 61 to bind up the brokenhearted the anointing that is given on account of your assignment two scriptures to help us Isaiah 61, please will not read it, um, will not project it, just write it. Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon me, because He gave me an assignment that requires an authorization. So because of that, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And with that Spirit came an anointing to preach glad tidings, to bind up the brokenhearted, right? To set the captive free, to open up the doors of prison, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all day in that morning Zion, to give them beautiful ashes, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The anointing came for that reason. Jesus reiterated it again in Luke chapter 4, when you read from verse 14 to 18. The Bible says they brought to him right that which was written by Isaiah the prophet and then he opened it and he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me and at the end of it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled i have come as a fulfillment of this then he began to do it in one of the synoptic gospels there and then he told a man with a withered hand stretch forth your hand as a proof that i have come 
What is the purpose of the anointing? I've said it to us, but we must. The purpose is, is encapsulated in the definition. But the purpose of the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Shabbat kapara Isaiah 10 27 I'd like us to read it together it's projected one to read and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed why? listen please look up there are yokes, there are burdens, there are afflictions upon the lives and the destinies of men, upon the families of men, robbing men of their dignity, mocking God's statement that he made man like him. And it takes the anointing to correct that error. Are we together? The anointing comes to lift burdens. The anointing comes to break yokes. The anointing comes to open up prison doors to them that are bound. Number two, Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66 verse 3. Let's read it please. Just write it and look up and let's read. One, two, read. Say unto God. Uh-huh. Read on. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Not through the greatness of grammar. Not through English and negotiation. On the strength of the excellency of your power. Listen, let me tell you something. You are liable for oppression the moment you find yourself here. Unfortunately, it is not given to you to choose to arrive here. Are we together? The moment you are born, there are children who from birth, they are already born with all kinds of sicknesses. Are we together? They never chose it. It's the reality. Listen, let me tell you. The moment you cross the second heavens, the domain of evil can find expression. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, the Bible says. But from the second heavens, demonic activities are authorized to find expression. Down till under the earth. That's what happens to children. The moment, it's not a man and a woman that produces children. They just create the body for the child to come. But the moment that child arrives, right from the interface of the second heavens, war begins over the destiny of the child. It's left for the father and the mother to be spiritual enough to secure the destiny of the child. Or careless enough to allow anything happen. Are we together? Yeah. That is why you hear that children are initiated from the womb. How can you initiate a child whose faculty of reasoning is not there? Are we together? Is it not in your Bible that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb? How did he pray in tongues? How did he manifest that? Hallelujah. I want to show you four keys to accessing the anointing. This, this is the place where I want us to be sensitive now. Because you are not only going to hear, you are going to receive. Hallelujah. Please believe me. You are not going to hear alone. You are going to receive. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. 
high answer to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, I wait on you. Holy Spirit, I wait on you for fire. Kaba kaba ya. For Lord, we wait. can make tonight your night of encounter listen there was a time in my life the anointing was not upon me I was not born with it are we together a time can come and tonight can be that time if you believe but if you are careless Elijah said if you can see me was he blind it's a spiritual language. There is a measure of sensitivity it takes to truly grab the anointing. It's not about falling down. Look at me. It's not about falling down. It's about your spirit. Station. You are not just hearing. You are seeing what the Lord is saying. Let me tell you something. The difference between you and the next level of your life is the anointing. There is nothing that will cover for the absence of the anointing. I know it. You reign, you ancient Zion king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your throne. Just follow me, follow me. You reign, you ancient Zion king. Kadosh. You are mighty on your own. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and we God You are mighty on your own. Shalom, shalom, my father, shalom, shalom, you're welcome in this place, shalom. Jehovah, Baba Shakatabayada. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Yeah.
down please be sensitive what are the keys that have turned ordinary men to wonders workers of miracles what can a man do what is the secret that can open up this fountain in the spirit for no man is born with this thing hear me there is a key there are keys no man is born with unction jesus himself what can make a man of god so powerful that your words can create an effect in the life of men you are speaking from one end and someone outside is shaking like a leaf what is the key please hear me this is an office i'm not speaking to you as a man i can speak to you as a man who has researched this truth but i speak to you as a custodian of the mystery of this thing i may not show you i may not boast that i know business principles i may not boast that i know on leadership but i can teach you the mysteries of the presence of god for it is an office it was given to me by jesus christ The angels bow before him. You're beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. The heavens are not the door. The angels bow before him. You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. Just follow me tonight. Heaven and earth the door. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. We haven't said I go. understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will walk in a new dimension believe me understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ministry will change like day and night understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will become like a God upon the earth understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ranking will change instantly in the spirit understand what i'm teaching you tonight and your life will become a wonder it's not by quoting scripture it's a realm you can stand in number one the first key to accessing the anointing is salvation don't trivialize it write it and take it as serious as anything there are many people in church who are not born again but they want power there are many pastors on the altar who are not born again but they want power you can fast as an unbeliever you will never find power you can be the pa of a man of god and not be born again please hear me that they ordain you does not mean you are born again are you hearing what i'm saying ah i tell you i sense fire in this place that you were ordained they poured oil on you does not mean that you are born again let me tell you we can do what we know to do on earth but it depends 
on whether God approves of it or not. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. John chapter 1 verse 12 we have to hurry up because God will soon sit in this place the weight of his glory but as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him as many as received him to them gave he what? power the power is for those who receive him not those who are near him not those who go to where he is proximity to god is not salvation let me tell you the truth there are so many people who need to examine their born again i am telling you this there are many people who are not born again are we together and i don't mean just by religious activities no an encounter with jesus christ no there are people who are not born again you will say this and many people will argue with you but the way the early church were born again when they were born again fire fell on them salvation the power to become is for those who receive for those who receive him they are the type god will back god does not back everybody just because Jesus died for everybody does not mean you just speak and things happen. You know, it's, and, and please, if you're a pastor here, hear me. Aside from the impartation you receive tonight, open your eyes. Don't think it's just by wearing suit and holding a mic. No, the power of God is here. All these things we keep doing, we fool ourselves. Nothing will cover for the absence of an encounter. Not suit, not English, not Greek and Hebrew. There must be a track record in the secret place. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountain top. You don't just come and stand and because they gave you a mic, you expect things to happen. No, sir. Human beings are not robots. Are we together? Human beings are not idiots. Do you know the power it takes to lift a man off his seat? I don't mean physically alone. Salvation. Number two. The second key. Give us 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. The second key, pay attention to a rich, heavy deposit of the anointing upon your life that is undeniable is addiction and passion for God and His kingdom. Addiction, passion. I'll give you more than a song. For a song in itself Is that what you have required? You search much deeper within To the way things are You're looking into my heart I'm coming back It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. There is no power for part time Christianity. There is no power for part time addiction. There is no power for part time ministry. So many pastors are part time ministers. By part time, I don't mean that you are doing another thing. Part time with God. And part-time with a 
ambition, looking for relevance, joining all kinds of stupid associations to quickly rise the ladder of ministry. No, it is God that lifts men. Please hear me. Your addiction for God must supersede your addiction for money must supersede your addiction for church your addiction for Versace and Boss and Gucci your addiction for cars and houses if you want God's power except if you want to go and see a herbalist but if you want the power that comes from heaven it must match your level of addiction you will never have more power beyond your addiction no your addiction defines the flow of the anointing. How addicted are you to God as a person? Two, how addicted are you to his kingdom? To seeing his kingdom come? Don't say I'm addicted. It shows in your giving. It shows in your time. It shows in your service in the house of God. Don't tell me you are addicted to God when you can be comfortable and come and sit in a ministry for months and years and you are not part of building that house. You are not addicted. No. It says, as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you. It was the psalmist that said this. He says, oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Right? To see your power and your glory. Let me tell you something. Many Christians in our generation. We love God. We are born again. But we are too ashamed of our addiction. Addiction. The same way. Have you seen someone addicted to uh, what they call this thing? Indian hemp. The person will not mind coming to meet a small child. And say sir please give me 10 naira. I have not eaten. He's lying so obviously but because he cannot help it if you can still manage your passion for god you don't love him enough oh let's let's be real let's let's not act like fools you are joking you want power i'm telling you you must fall in love with god with all your heart not fall in love with the healing anointing many of us are i you know i pray for people and most times when people come that I pray for them so that they will receive double portion or triple portion or whatever, I know they don't love God. They even love me more than God. I see it in their expression that they only love me because we have taught that you should honor a man. You know that they love me more than God. You know they love that anointing more than God. Anything above God, even if he gave you, is an idol. Whatever it is, please hear me. Do you love God more than your beauty? Do you love God more than power? Do you love God more than koinonia? Do you love God more than Joshua Selman? That's addiction. Do you love God more than marriage? Do you love God more than, more than whatever it's all these carnal things that take our time? Please fall in love with God in a way that nothing in time. People get jobs. When they lose jobs, they backslide. What a shame to your passion for God. You are in a relationship. Someone says, I will marry you. All of a sudden, he says, I'm not doing. And you leave God. God, I'm angry. I... Jesus told the disciples, he said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? Where, where are we going? Leaving you is no longer an option. If you never bless me, I still, I mean, I still owe you my love forever. Please, let me tell you something. If you want power from God, stop seeking God just because of things. Stop seeking God just because of things. Oh Lord, I want your time. I want your hand. And we bend God's hand with fasting and prayer. No. How many pastors want to see God glorified in their assemblies? Very little. I can tell you this. Many pastors fast. Some of you are like that. Probably you came from somewhere. You are sitting, boiling, waiting for the time of impartation. And God is saying, calm down, not so. So that you will not go back disappointed. God is not a herbalist. There is a protocol to true spiritual power. Addiction. Addiction. Outspoken Christianity. Out 
outspoken Christianity not the type you off your ringtone because you are in a place that 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 will fall your hand if God falls your hand you are fallen I tell you I rather be a doorkeeper the psalmist said I will trade my palace and its honor to serve God forever you will be forever you will be the lamb upon the throne the lamb upon the throne and i gladly bow my knees to worship you MOG. It's time to seek God more than ministry. Your ministry is distracting you and killing you from God. You have carried ministry and put on your head like a luggage that came from demons. And you, you will afford for your secret place to suffer so that you will fulfill a ministerial schedule. I can cancel any ministration for my secret place. You know, we think being busy is ministry. Oh, today I'm in Hawaii. Tomorrow I'm in Dubai. Next tomorrow I'm in South Africa. Next tomorrow I'm in UK. Then I'm in Accra, Ibom. I'm in London. And we think because we are hopping up and down, we are doing ministry. Let me tell you, you may be doing all these things, but before God, you are not doing anything. Your heart is more important than your voice to God. Don't think because you are always talking, it means God is hearing you. No. Your heart number three let's hurry up i want us to pray what is the third key the baptism of the holy ghost the third key to fire in your life is the baptism of the holy ghost slash prayers so you write it slash prayers that the experience of the baptism of the holy spirit First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 The baptism of the Holy Spirit Backed up By the ability To pray in tongues Fluent tongues Now there's no time for me to go into this discussion Please don't stop Mike Don't stop You see This concept of prayer And the concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit Has been hijacked by Satan Please listen to me. It is not a denominational perspective. It has nothing to do with Pentecostalism and charismatism. I was never filled with the Holy Ghost in any church. There is no pastor, no denomination that can claim that it was because I was in the assembly. No. God did that for me specifically so that I will be able to communicate these truths to people. The devil has cheated us. And I know many of us is in fear so that we don't get into witchcraft and diabolism. I understand and I respect your passion. But listen to me. If you want power in this kingdom, that endowment with power, that endowment with power, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 says, Now, when the day of Pentecost were fully come, he said they were gathered together in one accord. Verse 2 says, Suddenly, suddenly, not gradually. The baptism does not happen gradually. Suddenly. Are we together? Suddenly. They had a sound. That sound as of a mighty rushing wind. And the Bible says it came and filled the room. And then the Bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire. And it rested on each, each one of them. Not some, they're not as shared. Each one of them. Then the Bible says, then they began to speak with tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. There were 120 in the upper room. It was such an experience that all the people around that place came and saw the mighty things they were doing. And they said, these men were drunk with new wine. They linked that experience with wine. 
the same way a man drinks beer one bottle two bottles ten bottles at the eleventh one is not himself again another influence takes him so when they saw the men he said you are behaving like those who have taken this thing are we together now and then in Acts chapter 3 still well Acts chapter 2 when Peter finished preaching to them the Bible says they were caught to the heart and this is what they said men and brethren what shall we do and then he says repent for the remission of your sins and then he says you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children and as many as are far off as many as the Lord will call that included us are we together yeah in Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 is the most classic explanation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit Paul having passed through the upper coast the Bible says he came and he found certain disciples disciples they were already born again give us Acts please 19 1 to 4 they had passed through the upper coast the Bible says Paul came and found certain disciples are we together and then he asked them a question verse 2 he says have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe meaning it's not the same experience has been born again initiated by the same spirit but there are two separate experiences have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe and then they replied him they said we have not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost and Paul was surprised and then he says unto what then were you baptized he was asking them a question and they said the baptism of John then Paul began to explain to them he said the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one who was to come that means it was Jesus Christ and afterwards Paul said the Bible says they were now baptized to the name of Jesus Christ and then Paul laid his hands upon them and then the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues right they were 12 in number have you received the Holy Ghost have you received that empowerment since you believed when you read let's read from 18 18 the last five verses if you can give it to us right the bible talks about a very intelligent man hallelujah um no not 19 verse 18 18 acts 18 acts 18 please the last four verses acts 18 Media, are you with us? Acts 18. Okay, let's just let's just turn there so we don't waste time. Okay. Now the Bible says, give us from verse 24. Let's start from 24. Listen to this story. A certain Jew named who? Apollos. And the Bible says Apollos was born at Alexandria. He said he was a man who was mighty in scriptures. He was eloquent. He was an orator. Are we together? And then the Bible says he came to Ephesus. Ephesus is not the place you come and preach nonsense. It's where Paul got his revelation of the highest church truth. There was a goddess called Diana in Ephesus. She was the goddess that controlled that center of economy. So you had to be sound and mighty in scriptures. Now Apollos came. Next verse. 25. He said the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And was what? Fervent in spirit. Zealous. The Bible says. And he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he had a limitation. What was his limitation? Knowing only the baptism of John. He was born again and he knew repentance like many people in churches like many pastors they are serious they love god but the scope of the understanding of god is the baptism of john let's see what happened one day he went to a crusade to impress everybody as usual he says and he began to speak in the synagogue and then there were two strange men in that synagogue they were men who were powerful people of the spirit 
called Aquila and Priscilla. They said when they had him and they they took him with them. They said we see zeal in you but you are limited. There is a theology that has not been taught to you. We want to upgrade your scope of the understanding of God. The Bible says they took him, hear me. And then they says they expounded to him the way of God. More what? Perfectly. Let's see what he did as a result. Next verse. And when he was disposed and passed to Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. The Bible says who when he was come, he helped them much which believed through grace. Let's see what he did. Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Now he had an evidence. He didn't just speak to them. In the former verses he was eloquent. Sorry. But now he could convince them that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. This was not just just again. There was an evidence. There was an empowerment. Listen. You must be tired of explanations. Oh God is this. God is that. One miracle can answer a thousand questions. There is no amount of message you want to preach that will impress men again. The internet is full of messages. There are all kinds of men of God with perspectives. All across Africa, all across the world, messages are now free. What the world needs is a demonstration of power. Romans chapter 8, please. Verse 19. Romans chapter 8 For the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation not the explanation not the discussion Let's see it in the New Living Translation or the Message Bible I'm looking for the version that says creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are There is a version like that 8 verse 19 not 20, 8 verse 19. 8 verse 19. Uh, thank you. NLT. For creation is what? Eagerly waiting for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Because the Bible says it does not yet appear. They are still looking at us and they think we are like them. But there is an activity happening in us. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Are we together? The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be like. We are still in the formation. There is still a building. Christ is still being formed in us. Like Paul prayed to the church, he said, My little children, of whom I travel until Christ be formed. For when he's done let me tell you he will produce a wonder in our lives first corinthians 2 verse 7 quickly and then we'll go to the last key and we'll pray first corinthians 2 verse 7 he says talking about the mystery of this language of the spirit he said no please give it to us um Okay, no problem, no problem. Let's just sleep again. It says, no, the wisdom we speak, it doesn't make sense, but the Bible calls it the hidden wisdom. God put it like that so that only humble people can walk in it. If you are not humble enough to receive that hidden wisdom, the Bible says we speak, the wisdom we speak of is what? The mystery. Everybody say mystery. The same way there is a traditional festival And you see people going around fire And making enchantments And putting fire on their body Have you seen that happen? And it doesn't burn them They put the fire in their mouth and bring it out They carry knife and put it in their mouth And it enters and brings it out Because they are operating on a mystery The Bible says to the believer There is a mystery that has been given you It says the mystery of God his plan that was he previously hidden what was it he said even though he made it for our ultimate glory 
so one secret to your entering the glory is this mystery called tongues when a man locks up himself and begins to pray people say you are just talking nonsense no problem it's the same way you talk nonsense and call it laughter <laughs> and nobody laughs at you it's intelligent in fact people accuse you for not laughing who taught you how to laugh the same way your cry as sarcastic as it looks it compels compassion tongues is also like that don't let anybody tell you you are taught to pray in tongues when you slap a baby Shade, when you gave birth to your child and they slapped the child and the child started crying who taught the child that they cry with the mouth not the eyes it was programmed there listen i want you to know that the believer is supernatural when you remove the supernatural we are just herbalists leaders or and followers of a religion don't remove the supernatural dimension hallelujah made for our glory any man who does not pray cannot reveal the glory of god there is a relationship between prayer and power Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4, they receive tongues. Jesus didn't say you will receive tongues. He said you receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. Meaning there is a system that tongues uses to translate and produce power in a man. It was Paul himself that said, I thank my God. I pray in tongues more than ye. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1, he spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians 5 17 pray without ceasing it doesn't mean pray from morning till night you'll be an irresponsible person it means pray consistently the bible says and the fire upon the altar it shall never go down day or night let me tell you something whatever attacks your prayer life has really destroyed your life it's cheaper for your finances to be attacked than for your prayer life it's cheaper as bad as it is for your health to be attacked than your prayer life and let me tell you how satan attacks you he makes you to resent everybody that can help you you fight and quarrel them and push them when you are alone then he attacks you satan never attacks you until he creates an occasion through bitterness, through anger, through fault finding. So everybody that can help you and intercede for you, he cuts you away from them and then he leaves you alone. Solitude is a sign that darkness is close to you. Listen, listen. Excessive solitude, I'm not talking of just retreating to pray. When there is a desire in you to not hear people, to not listen, you are in a world of your own. It's a sign that darkness is close to you. It's a strategy for your destruction. The last key to receiving unction to reveal the glory is called impartation. The mystery of impartation. Transference of grace. Transference of unction. Transference of power. Numbers chapter 27 we'll just look at one example so that we pray let's see what transpired between moses and joshua a classic sign of biblical impartation numbers 27 verse 18 to 23 numbers chapter 27 please write subscribe to this channel click the button for notification share with someone else too for more messages like this